And I'd like to invite the first speaker to the stage, Pratush from Alio, who's going to be talking about efficient private delegation of ZK SNARK provers. Welcome, Pratush. All right. Hi, everyone. Fantastic to be here and see a lot of familiar faces and not familiar faces also in person. OK, my slides are up. And this clicker might run out of battery, but let's see. OK, fantastic. Now you can see what I'm talking about. OK, so yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Pratyush. And today I'll be presenting our work on delegating or outsourcing ZK SNARK provers in a privacy-preserving manner. This is joint work with my excellent co-authors, Alessandro, Ryan, and Yino. OK, let's get started. So we all, you know, no one loves ZK SNARKs here, but I'll still quickly recap what they do. So ZK SNARK is a protocol for a prover to convince or verify that some statement is true without revealing why it's true, so hiding some secrets, and in a way that um, the verifier can check quickly, right? The, the succinct proof is very efficiently checkable. You can see the stuff at the bottom, right? OK, fantastic. So there's many applications of ZK SNARKs, in particular the ZK part, uh, leaving aside the succinctness. You have things like private transactions, private smart contracts, some of which you know, people talked about just a minute ago. Um, uh, things like uh, decentralized hidden information multiplayer games, and many more. Right? So there's, there's a lot of uh, cool things you can do with these ZK SNARKs. But unfortunately, applying, them, applying these SNARKs to these applications, you run into one bottleneck. And that's proving, right? We all know that proving is really, really, really slow. So if you're trying to prove, like, you know, say hash is 10 kilobytes uh, of data with SHA-2, then it's going to take, like, a, you know, over two minutes. But it just takes a couple of milliseconds, or maybe not even that, I don't know, microseconds uh, on your computer, right? So SNARKs are slow. So one thing you can try to do is just say, OK, you know, I'm not going to run it on my phone. I'm just going to throw it off to the cloud and have some powerful machine run it for me and give me back the result uh, after you know, running the prover in some amount of time. And you know, if your computation is particularly large, you can even do things like uh, use a cluster, like a Spark cluster, to run your computation. And this is work, um, there's a paper called DISIC, which shows how to do this. right? And you get very nice scalability. OK, but the problem with this, with all of these techniques, is that you reveal your secret information to the, to the worker that you're using, right? That cluster or the individual server learns your secret witness, which you wanted to keep hidden. OK, so ideally, we'd, we want to outsource proving, but with privacy. We want to hide the witness while still not doing the work of generating the proof, right? So what we want is a delegation protocol or a scheme where the delegator can obfuscate the witness before sending it off to the cloud in some way. Uh, and then there's maybe some interaction between the cloud and the, uh, and the delegator. And in the end, the, the delegator gets back this proof that they can you know, give to whoever they want. All right. So what we want in from these delegation protocols is first it should be efficient. right? It should be much cheaper to outsource your you're proving to the cloud than it is to do it locally, because otherwise there's no point, right? Uh, second, the delegator's witness should be hidden from the worker. So this is the privacy goal, right? We don't want to reveal the witness again. Otherwise, we would just do it on our machine. OK, now the problem is that you know, straightforward approaches to this using MPC and like FHE are really heavyweight. So when you try to use like cryptographic tools, you, your total runtime is going to far exceed the running time of like doing it on your, on your device. So you don't want to do that. So what do you, so, okay, so if you want to just use a single server, you can't do that. So maybe what you can do is you can sort of relax the security guarantee a little bit and say, we only care about threshold privacy. So I'll outsource my proving to you know, a set of machines. And they can interact and you know, you know, compute the proof for me via some sort of cryptographic protocol. And the guarantee that I want is that now as long as one of these workers is honest and doesn't collude with the others, my witness is hidden. Right? So as long as one machine is uh, behaving honestly, yeah, you're fine. So you think maybe you know, one of those machines is AWS, one is uh, you know, Google Cloud, and the other one is Azure or something like that. Right? So they might not be coll you know, colluding with each other uh, for competitive reasons. Okay. So this is sort of a more achievable looking goal. 
So let's see what we could do. Okay. So what we do in this in this uh, work, which is not yet online, um, is construct exactly these kinds of uh, delegation protocols for zk snark provers uh, for these popular class of zk snarks, uh, which rely on polynomial IOP. So things like Planck, Malin, Sonic, every you know, sort of recent work on zk snarks falls into this category. And we show how to construct delegation schemes for this entire class of snarks by constructing first delegation schemes for polynomial commitments, which I'll talk about you know, in a couple of minutes, and then for the polynomial IOP itself, and then finally a compiler which takes these two delegation schemes for the subcomponents and constructs a delegation scheme for the entire ZK snark. All right. So yeah, it's not just a theory paper because otherwise, you know, I, I have a very concrete motivation. It'd be kind of disappointing to say, okay, I'm done with the proof. Um, so we actually implemented and evaluated our protocols, and we have a bunch of metrics that we'll talk about at the end of the paper. But the TLDR is that when you're delegating from your phone to this cloud server, um, generating the proof end to end takes 26x less time, right? So that 140 seconds becomes like five seconds. So it's maybe more reasonable if I have my math correct. Okay. All right, so the straw man, so let's see how we can do this. The straw man technique is to use what's called MPC or multi-party computation. This is a cryptographic technique which allows a bunch of, um, I guess, parties which I don't want to collude with each other, which have some interest in keeping data disjoint from each other to jointly compute on their, on their data in a way that um, you know, they get the result, but no, no party learns any information about the other party's inputs, right? So every party's input is kept secret. So basically, it's a way to do distributed computing on secret data. All right, so you could just throw this, you know, generic crypto tool at it. Um, but the problem is that off-the-shelf MPC tools are very, 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 very expensive. Um, yeah, they also require expressing your prover algorithm as, uh, as a this arithmetic circuit, which you might be familiar with in the context of zk snarks, very similar thing happens for these MPC protocols. Yeah, but the problem ends up being that the prover circuit itself ends up being, again, very, very large for any of these zk snarks that I talked about. All right, so why is this circuit large? So we'll, as I said, we'll focus on this class of snarks, which rely on polynomial IOPs and polynomial commitments. So polynomial IOP, for those who are not familiar, is an interactive protocol between a prover and a verifier where the prover's messages are polynomials, okay? So sort of, you know, this includes Sonic, Malin, basically all the protocols I talked about uh, on the slide there. Uh, and the other component is what's called a polynomial commitment scheme. So this key, this is a thing, a primitive, you know, Anna, I guess, had the very useful descriptions. But basically, it allows you to commit to a polynomial and then later prove that the evaluation of that polynomial at some point is correct, is, is the claimed evaluation, okay? And again, we have many instanti instantiations of these, such as the KZG10 one, uh, things based on inner product arguments, Dark, Hyrax, a bunch of things, okay? Even Fry, right? So the zk snark prover circuit consists of sub-circuits for both of these components, and both of these are like fairly heavy cryptographic objects, right? Um, so the two problems end up being is that first, stitching together these um, uh, circuits for each of the subcomponents is itself expensive because you have to do things like reason about different finite fields. And secondly, the sub-circuits, as I said, can themselves be quite complex, right? So we want to simplify both that plus sign and the, in, like, the two sub, like, little boxes inside as well. So let's see how we can do it. Let's see how we can, um, I guess, start solving part one. So before I guess I dive in, I'll do like a very quick, very whirlwind re recap of how you can construct these, because this will be useful in the construction later. Um, I think I'm doing okay on time, but yeah, let's see. All right. So in these SNARKs, which rely on these polynomial IOPs, what you do is uh, the ZK SNARK prover runs the polynomial IOP prover. Um, and the same thing for the verifier, it runs the polynomial IOP verifier. Uh, the prover, it produces some polynomial, you commit to it using a polynomial commitment, send over the commitment. Uh, the verifier runs the PIOP verifier, you send back the challenge, whatever. You repeat this for a bunch of rounds, you get some commitments, okay? Um, and then comes the query phase where you have to prove that these committed polynomials, when you evaluate them at some query set, uh, you know, the evaluations are correct. 
Okay. This is a whirlwind overview. You don't need to understand too much, but just basically the takeaway is that you produce the polynomials and you commit to them, okay? And then you later prove that those committed polynomials um, evaluate to whatever you claim they evaluate, okay? All right. Maybe I should stop for questions at this point. Any questions about anything? No? Okay. I'll go on. Feel free to stop me uh, within, I guess, time bounds. All right. Okay. So this is basically the, the structure of these ZK snarks. Um, the other building block that we'll be using before we dive in is this notion of um, additive secret shares. You might he have heard of Shamir's secret sharing. This is a very simple ver version of that, which basically says that you can take your message and split it up into like n chunks or shares, such that as long as you don't have all n of them, you don't leak any privacy. Uh, even if you have at most n minus one of the secret shares for a given message, you can't learn any information at all about that message. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, if you have all n shares, you can combine all of them and get your message back. And the other interesting property that we'll care about is this thing called homomorphism or additive homomorphism, which says that if I have a secret share of A and a secret share of B, I can just add those secret shares and get a secret share for A plus B. Okay? Um, so this is called additive homomorphism in cryptography. Uh, it'll be useful in just a second. All right. I think I'm speaking fast, so I'll you know, try to slow down a bit. All right, so let's uh, you know, handle each of our problems one by one, starting with this issue of combining subcircuits, right? So the problem that we had was we we're just trying to take the zk snark prover as a monolithic object and throwing an MPC protocol at it, right? But actually, our zk snark prover has this underlying structure, so let's try to exploit that. So we'll take advantage of the, this modular nature of the prover and say, instead of doing a monolithic MPC, we'll you know, construct an MPC for delegating just the polynomial IOP, and we'll combine it with an MPC protocol just for delegating the polynomial commitment scheme, and uh, this will give us our protocol for delegating the ZK snark. All right, so this is the high-level structure. Um, I'll talk a little bit about you know, what this combining step looks like, and then we'll dive into um, how to actually construct each of those uh, boxes on the your left, oh, my left, oh, whatever. Okay, all right, so let's see how we can do this. So let's say we have these two boxes as given, right? Uh, how we start off with is the, is the delegator sends secret shares of the witness to each of the, like let's say there's only two machines in this example, right? To each of the two worker machines. <coughs> then what they do is they take these secret shares and they in invoke this MPC for the PIOP prover and get secret shares of the first polynomial, so the polynomial produced in the first round for example, okay? Then what they do is that um, they'll take, they'll invoke the MPC for delegating PC schemes uh, and get the commitment for that polynomial, shares of the commitment for that first round polynomial, okay? And then they can do the same thing as, they, as you saw in the, in the sort of the standard snark. They just repeat these two operations over and over again in sequence um, until they have this vector of polynomials and vector of commitments corresponding to all of the rounds. And then they can run the sort of proving step to produce the evaluation proof for these commitments, right? Okay, so it's, the structure is basically the same as that slide earlier. We just replace sort of running the <clears throat> IOP prover and the PC scheme committer locally. You just replace that with these MPC protocols for doing the same, okay? So the high-level structure is, is very clear. Okay. So at the, end of, at, the, at, and at the end of doing this, now these workers, they have shares of the final zk snark proof, right? They have shares of the commitments, they have shares of the evaluation proof, and they have shares of the evaluations themselves. So they send this stuff back to the delegator, who can combine these shares and recover the actual zk snark proof, which it can go use in whatever application it wanted to use. Okay, so that solves problem one. Any questions on that? Yeah. Wait, wait. Actually, uh, actually, afterwards. I wonder. Yeah. So you're going to do talk question talk question. I can do either way. We have to get it on the mic for it to work. So, sure. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I should have asked before. Uh, so my question is, how you compute the challenges? Uh, so yeah. So that's a very good question. So what you can just do is you can select. Actually. 
that previous diagram, I lied a little bit. Um, you can actually, it's okay to, for the commitments to, to be sent to all to one party. So this fellow on the bottom can send uh, his uh, share of commitments to the worker on the top, right? And it can combine it, and then you can get the actual commitments in the clear and run the random oracle on those. Um, you could also send it back to the delegator, and the delegator could give you the random oracle challenge. That's another idea that you could use. We have a different, couple of different variations in the, in the paper, which is not online yet. Yeah, very good question. I think there's another one here. Yeah. Um, for, so for something like Plunk, you'd have to compute something not at it, like you'd have to multiply two polynomials together, for example, to get a polynomial later around. Um, so th the diagram showed only interaction between the servers, but I'm imagining that you would, s there would be continual interaction between the phone as well, right? That depends again on the setting. Um, I'll get into it when I talk about how you actually implement both of the boxes. Yeah. Okay, very good questions. All right, so that's, I guess, a high-level overview of the compiler, which takes these two you know, delegation schemes for the underlying uh, components. So let's see how we can actually construct these underlying delegation schemes. All right, so, and that's solving the problem of yeah, getting cheap subcomponents. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, constructing delegation schemes for our PIOP provers, right? So that's what we want. We want something which says, given a secret share of the state of the prover at a given point, at a given round, give me the polynomial for that, uh, for that round, right? Uh, or secret shares of the polynomial for that round. Okay. Now, the operations, before we can talk about how to speed this up, right, or how to implement it efficiently, we have to figure out what operations are actually done by these PIOP provers. And by and large, for all of the SNARKs that we care about, I think, um, <clears throat> these operations are just basically these four. You want to evaluate your polynomial over some multiplicative subgroup, uh, your evaluation domain, if, you're, if that's a better term for you. Um, you want to divide your polynomial by some vanishing polynomial of that same subgroup. You want to do some affine operations, you know, additions, subtractions, adding a constant or something. And finally, you might want to do some polynomial multiplications, right, um, between secret shared polynomials. So the good thing is that the first three of these, they can all be implemented via linear operations on your secret shared polynomial. So this doesn't require any interaction between the workers at all, right? So this is, this is very efficient to do. You just do local operations on your polynomials, um, and you can get the secret shares of those results. But for polynomial multiplications, that's not quite true. To multiply two polynomials uh, of, say, degree d, what you have to do is this is getting a bit technical, but bear with me. Use an FFT to get the evaluations of your polynomials over your subgroup or your multiplication or your evaluation domain. You do a pointwise multiplication between these evaluations, and then you do an inverse FFT to get out interpolation to go from these evaluations back to coefficient form, right? There's a whirlwind overview of polynomial multiplication. Now, the nice thing is that steps one and three are again linear. They they're just FFTs, so they don't require anything, uh, any sort of secret multiplications. But unfortunately for us, step two is a multiplication between two secret shares, right? And our secret shares, they have additive homomorphism, but they don't have multiplicative homomorphism. So you can't just multiply two secret shares and expect to get a secret share of the, um, of the product. But thankfully, in our setting, and okay, normally in, like, this is the key sticking point in a lot of MPC, this handling multiplications or AND gates is the, is the very expensive part of um, MPC protocols. But in our setting, we have a helper, we have a delegator. So what we can do is, if your workers have secret shares of two things they want to multiply, they can just send those secret shares back to the, to the delegator, who can just combine the secret shares, compute the product, and send back fresh shares of the product, right? So we're really making, we can leverage this um, Delegator, and the, and the key thing here is that field multiplications are very cheap, right? So I'm not asking the delegator to do something like a multi-scalar multiplication, which is expensive and kind of would defeat the purpose of delegation, right? But these field multiplications, you can do them in like a few nanoseconds, right? They're, they're quite efficient. All right, so this is how we can leverage the delegator to get um, very cheap 
polynomial multiplications with just one round of interaction with the delegator. And actually, in the paper, we have other techniques that you can use. The, the delegator doesn't even have to be around during the execution of the protocol. You can just send some pre-processed material beforehand um, and then sort of go offline and just receive the proof at the end. But that's um, for the paper. Okay, so this is how we can uh, you know, very efficiently imp implement like 99% of the operations that happen in, in modern ZK-SNARK or PIOP provers. All right, so that handles the first component. What about delegating PC schemes? So I'll particularly look at the KZG10, because, uh, polynomial commitment scheme, because that's the most popular one. And recall that we, have, we want to do two things. We want to first uh, take a sh secret share of a polynomial and get a secret share of the commitment. And then, uh, given the secret share of the polynomial and an evaluation point, I want to prove that the committed polynomial actually evaluates to whatever the claimed evaluation is, right? So the two things I want to do, committing and opening. Um, in terms of committing, the cool thing is that the commitment scheme is linearly homomorphic also. So a commitment to the shares of the polynomial is a share of the commitment to the polynomial. Yes, I got that right. OK. <laughs> so, so just assume that the, you know, your vector of the shares has this structure. Then a commitment, a share of the commitment is just the the standard thing that you would do with KCG, which is compute the multiscalar multiplication, right? So there's really almost no difference from the actual uh, KCG algorithm. And the same thing um, when you actually want to produce the evaluation proof. Um, you compute your share of the witness polynomial, which is this quotient thingy, right? Uh, yeah, whatever that expression is. Um, and the cool thing is that this also does not require any secret multiplications. This is a linear operation. So basically, the takeaway is that the complexity is literally the same as the standard KCG um, you know, on non-shared or non-secret shared polynomials. So committing to a secret shared polynomial and proving its evaluation is, is literally the same. There's no difference here. So that's, I guess, wraps up the two components. Um, okay. Yeah, I just want to say there's a couple of other recent papers that have appeared which have similar techniques uh, to the stuff that I've mentioned just now in different contexts, not for delegation, but for like MPC over or proving over shared data. Okay, so there's tons more optimizations in the papers. Um, you can really take uh, an advantage, a uh, you know, large advantage of the, uh, <clears throat> the setting of you have a trusted third party in some sense to do the expensive operations, a uh, few of the expensive operations for you. Um, uh, okay, this is working again. All right, so we have the optimizations on the crypto techniques as well as on the system side. Um, so it, it, you, when the paper is online, I would encourage you to read it. Um, so we've solved, at least hopefully, uh, both problems one and two. So the question is, okay, I've talked a lot about theory and uh, things of polynomials and all this garbage, okay? <laughs> but the question is, does this actually result in concrete performance improvements? Can you actually take these protocols and get something and implement it and get an actual speed up for your application today? And the answer is, thankfully, yes. We implemented this uh, using Aquax. Um, it's me, so I would do Aquax, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have uh, delegation protocols for KZG. We want to implement it for the inner product argument scheme as well. For the Marlin PIOP, but it should be fairly straightforward to extend it to things like Plonk, whichever variant of Plonk you want. Um, and you know, by compiling, by putting it together with our compiler, we get a delegation scheme for the Marlin snark. Okay? In terms of uh, actual concrete performance, we uh, evaluated these schemes in like, sort of three different settings, a laptop which has very fast internet access. Um, and here you can see there's a latency reduction of, of 9x compared to normal execution. But something that's really interesting is that, uh, I guess, the last two columns. The first one says, how much time does the uh, delegator actually spend actively computing something versus waiting, waiting for stuff to be computed, right? And the answer is that uh, computation, active computation goes down by 600 times almost. So this is like a massive energy savings, massive, you can do whatever else you want on your computer in the meanwhile. Um, another benefit is that you can actually um, prove much larger instances within the same memory budget compared to uh, if you, if you were proving it locally, right? So this is 256 times larger. So if you could prove something of a you know, size of a million on your computer, now you can outsource 
uh, the, the computation and prove a circuit of 256 million constraints, which is kind of insane, right? Okay. Uh, the other settings are a laptop with the you know, standard home internet, and here we see sort of less impressive numbers because the uh, communication overhead back and forth between the delegator becomes kind of problematic. And the final one is uh, doing the same experiments on a mobile phone, and here, because the phone is so much weaker, even you know, despite the slower internet, you're still able to see quite large uh, performance improvements. All right, so that sort of wraps up my presentation, I think. Yeah, um, so the paper is coming soon to an e-print near you, and the code also, hopefully. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Two questions up front. Uh, hello. So I have a question or maybe a suggestion how to possibly make your uh, this fantastic thing is like 30 times better. So, uh, you know, actually in many uh, prover uh, use cases, you know, uh, well, the, the, the number of in possible, uh, possible witnesses is, 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 is small. For example, recall like Zcash or Tornado Cache, you have an, a tree, having a tree like to the 32 layers, uh, the 32 layers, two to the 32 possible leaves, mm -hmm. and to every leaf you prove that you know a preimage. But actually, you can delegate uh, all possible uh, paths from a leaf to the root to delegators. They compute like two to the 32 leaves, and you retrieve one of them using private information retrieval, for example. And you yourself, you compute only a proof for like this uh, tiny thing, which is 30 times smaller. And this one, you can delegate using this thing. So you can, but if you are able to combine their proof for like almost the full path with your proof for hash preimage, then you can make it like 30 times faster. Yeah, so no, that's a cool technique. Uh, does that require sort of splitting up the circuit um, into something that the, I guess, you pre-process and then later on. Yeah, I think so that the, I guess the motivation of this work was to just say, I don't want the application developers to do anything for their applications. You just want to, you know, yeah, literally like you can use any existing verifier to do this. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's a cool technique. And yeah, there's a lot of application level optimizations that you can also do combined with this and other, other techniques like your uh, idea. Hi. Uh, maybe a trivial question. Uh, how easy is it to find faulty or malicious walkers? How, how easy is it to find a faulty, sorry, what? Faulty walkers, like. Yeah, so in some sense, the result of the computation is self-verifying, right? Like if the worker is cheating, then you'll get an incorrect proof, right? Um, otherwise, you sort of broken the soundness property of your uh, ZK snark, right? Um, so from that perspective, it's, it's like at the end you'll know when you have something that's correct or not. Uh, from a liveness perspective, it's not like this protocol, at least in like the instantiation that we have in the paper, it's not the greatest because uh, the, you know, one of the workers could just decide to like drop out and then you're waiting for that worker to finish. So you might have a timeout or something. Um, so they can do like a denial of service attack. Um, but otherwise, as, in terms of actually influencing the correctness of the proof, there's not anything they can do. Uh, that's, not, that's not detectable. Any other questions? Uh, I was wondering. Sorry. Uh, I was wondering. Does it uh, this ability to produce shares of the polynomials? Does it also presuppose that the circuit itself has been somehow cut up into um, shares of the circuit, as it were? And is there what is the communication between the different workers, basically? So that's linear in the circuit size. It's not a. It's not like a, something like DISIC or like, you know, like sort of. Each worker is not doing a chunk of the computation. They're doing basically like the full prover computation uh, with some caveats, um, which it'd be very interesting to see how you could combine techniques from uh, yeah, DISIC with, with this work um, to see how you can reduce the load at each worker. Um, that'd be a very interesting future work, I think. Yeah, great questions. I think there's a question all the way back. Uh, so KZG polynomial commitment uh, seems to be quite MPC friendly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what if you use uh, something that utilizes stuff from Fry, like Fry-based polynomial commitment? Yeah, there's a couple of things. That's a good question. There's a couple of things you can do there. Um, so the problem with Fry is that it's all hashes, right? So there's no additive homomorphism that you can leverage. What you can do is at the very leaves, you can say, I'm going to commit 
the my Merkle tree is going to be built over additively homomorphic commitments, for example. Um, and then the workers exchange those commitments, and at the end, somebody builds a Merkle tree over the commitments. So you'll have commitments to the secret shares, which are secret shares of the commitments, right? Um, unfortunately, from a delegation perspective, that doesn't make too much sense because the cost of computing those commitments is very high, uh, much higher than the Merkle tree cost itself. So you might end up with like an overall slower prover, but it might be helpful in other um, protocols like where you just care about privacy and not actually delegating. Um, there's also other things I think the um, uh, OB22 paper, um, they have a, another protocol where the proof size grows logarithmically with the number of uh, workers. Um, basically, build like a mini Merkle tree at the leaf consisting of all the workers' shares. You can do that also. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, what, who, who just asked that question? Can you say it into a mic? I can, I can repeat the question also. Uh, or that. Yeah, so the question was just can you, uh, <laughs> for this you know, fry technique, can you actually uh, use MPC friendly hashes? I, th I think it doesn't work. You, you would pay a large cost just because the, um, you'd be running your hashes inside MPC, which is expensive. We, we wanted to avoid running any expensive crypto in like off the shelf MPC. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Okay. There's another one over here. Okay. Um, so the uh, depending on how you know how many workers you pick, the global energy usage may be higher than. It will go up. Yes. So uh, what do you think is a reasonable trade-off in terms of you know total energy usage and? Uh... I think it depends on like sort of the cost of privacy in your application uh, and the cost of privacy to the user in particular. Like if I don't care about you know particular Zcash transactions, somebody knowing where it's going, then I can just do it on my computer. Uh, but if I'm like, you know, a very uh, paranoid person, then I might, and, but I don't have a good computer because, you know, I don't trust powerful computers. Um, <laughs> so then in that case, I might outsource and be willing to eat the additional energy cost. Um, there, there are things that you can do to optimize it so that the work at, uh, like, all the workers are not doing, like, all of the protocol, all of the prover work. Um, in particular, if, you, if your protocol has this sort of, structure where parts of it are witness independent, then only one worker has to do it. So for those things, it's not any more inefficient compared to running it um, uh, on, your, on your own device. So for example, Marlin has that structure. Any further questions? All right, one at the front, We're almost front. Um, some practical one when you when you compare the phone implementation, mm -hmm. that was also our quirk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, imagine you could have like a more optimized implementation, but I think sort of any optimizations that target your phone would also hopefully translate to your server implementation. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, then thank you so much, Pratush, for the talk. Thank you so much, everyone.